Chapter 1. The Humble Beginnings In the shadowed alley that slipped behind the flashy facade of the fast food fortress, a minuscule green fly known as Bobo Grease carved out his pocket-sized realm. In this world of discarded french fries, grease-scented air, and the distant hum of fryers, Bob's existence was one that defied convention. For while he was a mere speck, his world was no less grand, and his heart danced an intricate jig whenever he caught a glimpse of Betsy Eulish. The enchanting part, Time Drive, through Tendant, whose charm was as bewildering as it was captivating, Bob's method of courting, if one could bestow such a term on a fly's actions, was a ballet of subtlety, perfected only by the flutter of wings. In the cloak of Betsy's unconscious gaze, he plucked the tiniest of wildflowers, each petal bearing the weight of his affection, and gingerly set them amongst the strands of her hair. These delicate tokens, invisible to her eyes, intrigued and confounded Betsy in equal measure. Suspicions arose, often pointing at Justin the prankster, the notorious co-worker whose reputation was marred by pranks ranging from saliva, enhanced burgers to bathroom graffiti laden with saucy suggestions. In the undercurrents of Bob's affections and Justin's antics, a covert war of intentions unfurled. Bob's heart, though dwarfed by the realm around him, beat with a tenacity that bespoke of a hero's spirit. Unwilling to be a bystander, he hatched an audacious plot. Amidst the frenzied symphony of the kitchen, he executed a maneuver that could only be described as audacious artistry. With surgical precision, Bob placed a morsel-sized offering upon Justin's burger, an act that held a potent sting, a poetic justice so infinitesimal yet heartily fitting. The aftermath was swift and unapologetically agonizing, reducing Justin to a spectacle of stomach-churning misery, his own misdeeds returning with an intensity that could only be deemed just. Bob's valiant pursuit of justice, however, came at a cost. His wings were injured, and his ability to take to the skies was abruptly truncated, with a resolute determination uniquely characteristic of the smallest of creatures. Bob embarked on an arduous journey. He navigated the treacherous path of the foreboding driveway, where mammoth wheels loomed like silent executioners, ready to flatten him into oblivion. Along his treacherous odyssey, Bob faced off against formidable ant armies with an unflinching resolve, outwitted avian adversaries whose appetites or airborne prey were insatiable, and even outsmarted an inebriated squadron of fruit flies, their drunken escapades rivaling a slapstick comedy. Unbeknownst to his inebriated foes, Bob had acquired an unconventional form of training through hours spent observing a Tayek Wanda school next door. Armed with this unlikely mastery, he engaged in a series of kicks and maneuvers that transformed his tiny frame into a dance of martial prowess. The fruit flies, stumbling in their inebriated stupor, were no match for his multi-legged choreography, leaving them in a befuddled state of chaotic disarray. Bob's fate took an astonishing twist as he ventured into the auditory realm of none other than Justin himself. Navigating the labyrinthian corridors of Justin's psyche, Bob found himself fusing with the rogue's consciousness, a merger of the fly and the prankster as peculiar as it was extraordinary. Now manifested as Bob Justin, he approached Betsy, unveiling the enigma of his identity and the serendipitous fusion that had occurred. Betsy's response was a symphony of bewilderment, a cacophony of confusion that seemed to be woven from the tapestry of Henry Miller's irreverent prop. Their love story, an inexplicable convergence of a fly's delicate gestures and a rogue's audacious bravado, flourished against the odds. Their nuptials were a spectacle of juxtapositions, an event that could rival the quirkiest of Harry Harrison's narratives. And as the generations unfolded, their offspring inherited the legacy of flight from Bob, soaring above societal norms with wings that bore the unmistakable imprint of their unconventional heritage. In the annals of time, their lineage underwent remarkable transformations. Some of their descendants sported the distinctive fly-faceted eyes, an attribute that bestowed a distinct advantage, a connection to both their past and their future. These exceptional individuals evolved into daring cosmic explorers, venturing into the celestial abyss as intrepid space pilots. Their legacy was not only etched in the stars, but intertwined with the fabric of fiction itself, a narrative that would earn the envy of literary great. And so, the tale unfurls, a saga woven from the imagination of Stephen King, infused with the spirit of Harry Harrison, and punctuated with the whimsical verbiage that only Henry Miller could conjure. A story where the seemingly disparate threads of flies, fries, and affection intertwine, painting a panorama that spans the gamut of horror, comedy, 
and the profoundly absurd.